Buongiorno, everybody. And buongiorno from Angelina. <laughs> She's going to the beach. So, that gave us a couple minutes to let people come on. Hope you all are doing good today. So, I'm in a chocolate mood. So, we're going to make a chocolate mascarpone cake. What's really cool about this is there's no butter in it and there's no oil in it. It's a very simple cake, but you have... Yes, we've got some mascarpone in it, but there's no butter, uh, butter or oil, so a little less fat, you know, so not too bad. So anyway, all right, so it's a really simple recipe. We haven't even started a flour on me already. Um, a really simple recipe. We're going to start out with four eggs. So that's what's going to help it fluff up nice. So let me get my little extra bowl, crack my eggs in. So how's everybody today? What is today anyway? Is today Wednesday? I think it's Wednesday. <laughs> These days, who knows? Or who cares what day it is, right? It's chocolate cake day. So yesterday we had such a nice big pasta dinner outside. Celebrating Leo being home. Alright, we got four nice eggs here. We made some homemade pasta. Oh, so good. I'm so glad I made a lot because I have some extra we're going to have later for lunch. We're going to have all leftovers today. It's real fun. So now, this cake is easy enough and simple enough that you could do it completely by hand with a whisk or just your hand mixer. I want to fluff up my eggs, so I'm going to go ahead and use the hand mixer. Sometimes when you're um, making something like a cake and you want to make it nice and fluffy and fluff up your eggs, the hand mixer, I personally think, whips it up a little bit better than does the big one with the, I mean, I do have the big whisk attachment for my big mixer and it does work fine, but sometimes I feel like I can move this around better and like just fluff it up a little more. Plus it's easier to wash and just take these two things out and throw them in the machine, you know. So anyway, um, all right, and we're going to put in... 200 grams of sugar is my original recipe, but you know me, I like to make it a little less. I love my little bowl. Okay, so now, where was I? We've got eggs in here. We're going to do probably not 200 grams of sugar, but let's see what it looks like. See, that's 100. It's not quite. And that's too much. We're gonna go 175. We're gonna go a little light on the sugar. It's not really too sweet of a cake to begin with, but I still always lighten it up. I got that a nice little mix. Now, the yummy part. Let's put in some mascarpone, because you know I told you I want to use up this whole container here in the very quick future. So, oh, you know what? Let's use this one because I'm going to use that for my flour afterwards. So we're going to put in 250 grams of mascarpone. If it ever wants to get off the spoon. All right, let's see here. It's never a bad thing Whoop. to have extra, any kind of cheese. Okay, so let's mix this together. I love putting the unexpected things in my cakes, whether it's the ricotta or the yogurt or the mascarpone. I'm telling you, always add something nice. Let's make it a little faster for a second. Woo! 
try to get it, you know, as creamy as it can. It doesn't have to be 100%. The mascarpone's always going to leave little chunks. Once you mix the flour and everything, it all smooths out. So now we're going to put in 150 grams of flour. And again, I will post the recipe with the proper amounts, but like this is one cup. So let's see what, oops, wait a minute. Forgot to clear it. Clear, okay. One cup, all right, that's 130 some grams. We want 150. Okay. So we're gonna put this in. Actually, this, and then we're also, we're gonna do it all at one time. We're gonna put in 50 grams of cocoa. 50 grams of cocoa. So we're going to put this in, let's mix it a little. Actually, you know what else we're going to mix in here? The baking powder. So one teaspoon of baking powder. Let's just do it this way. That's a teaspoon. All right. And then I'm going to throw in a little smidge of vanilla into here. It's about, about a teaspoon-ish. Maybe a smidge less, but it's plenty. Let me just give this a quick stir around. And now we're slowly going to add in all the flour and stuff. And you're watching me mix with my left hand. <laughs> It smells good. Okay, now I'm gonna switch hands. Make sure I forget anything. Have to get up all the sides, get it all off of there. cake batter is only as good as it's batter. Cake is only as good as it's batter. Mm. It's really yummy. Because the mascarpone gives it that mm, something. Okay, I was going to take another spoonful. Can't double dip. Okay, let's move that over. Let's move this over here. Put this baby in a pan. So you can put this in a spring form pan which when you're making these kind of cakes that you want the top to be pretty because we're going to end up just very um lightly powdered sugaring the top spring forms are nice because you don't have to worry about flipping it over then the top gets ugly then you gotta put more powdered sugar on it to cover it and make it look okay so these kind of cakes these are these ones that i've been making lately the apple cake the orange cake the um ricotta lemon cake these are cakes that are nice for your day to day, where you can have a slice for breakfast and it's not too sweet. You can have it with your coffee or a snack in the afternoon. It's not too, too sweet. Um, it's also a nice midweek dessert. We don't get too decadent. We don't have all these frostings and all these heavy sweetened fillings and things like that that make sweets too sweet and therefore detrimental to be having regularly. If you, everybody likes sweets, it's just a given. There's those few people out there who only like salty, but I like sweet and salty, and I love a nice little treat. I like something with my coffee. So when I have something, I can have something like this. It satisfies me. It doesn't kill me, you know? So we're going to just now spray the pan. There's a crumb in there. Okay. So I'm just going to spray this. You can... Um, parchment the bottom if you want and then you can slide it off I have a giant giant spatula so I'm very good at just sliding it under if you want to check this thing out Ta -da! 
This is a giant spatula. I can put this under a whole cake and lift it up and move it over. Isn't that neat? This was actually an old um, Pampered Chef thing that they don't carry anymore, and I'm bugging them. I, I saw one somewhere else once, and um, I don't remember where, but I'll find it because that's one of the things that is really cool to have. So, just rubbing my oil around to have no dry spots. Okay. And now I'm going to get my big spatula. Them. And we're going to put this batter in the pan. spread it out. You know what this is for? This is going to take a little teeny spatula later. I'm going to do that. Uh -oh. Actually, I'm not, I don't really leave too much in the pan anymore these days. Try to put it all in the cake pan. Because so I could actually eat, I think, more of it raw than I can cooked. And no, I'm not afraid of raw eggs. My grandfather used to drink them. Lots of people do. All right, so I have this beautiful, nicely battered. Oh darn, this wouldn't come off. Mm. <laughs> you know, you can't help it. You have to enjoy while you're cooking. I'm gonna sure hope I don't have chocolate on my face anywhere. But I do have one more sip of coffee, thank goodness. If I'm going to eat on camera, it's better it's the batter because I don't choke on the crumbs. There's no crumbs yet. Ta da! So, anyway, all right, I'm going to run this, put this in here. All right, so, wipe my counter off here. I'm going to come and get you, and we're going to check for a couple minutes, and I'll give you the recipe. So, oh. This was a morning. It was, um, I don't know, seems like that lately, doesn't it? That's why I love using my little oven sometimes because it doesn't heat up the whole kitchen, you know? Let's see here. Oh, there we go. Oh, my, my hair's drippy. <laughs> oh, right, the batter's the best. All right, so let me put this on so I can see what everybody's up to. And if anybody had any questions, um, I will tell you, this is just really um, a nice cake. It's um, it's simple. It's uh, you know not too not too heavy. It is a nice kind of dense and moist. But I'll show you later when it's done. If we're if we're still on when it's done, which I don't think we will be, but you never know. Um, you know me. Sometimes I think I have nothing to say, and all of a sudden we're talking about lots of stuff. So. Leo being back, my entire living room is full of Leo stuff. His Marine Corps stuff, his stuff that was from his apartment before he left that was all in my attic. He's all brought it all down, he's sorting through it. It's like, I don't want this, I don't want this. It's good, it's healthy, it's good to cleanse and start the next phase of life, you know? So let's see where we are here and if we can, um, see what's going on does anybody have any questions today or anything somebody tell me some good news i would love to manu petsuate i would love to send a piece and licking the batter yes the batter is so good but you know i have to say i have had a batter that tasted really good and then the cake was like like the flavor was good but it was like dry or something you know um but that's okay then i just should have ate the batter and forget the baking it you know but um, yeah, it is always chocolate time, isn't it? Um, I actually have a lot of different chocolate recipes and I have some um, that I use Nutella in. I haven't done any of that stuff yet. I've been trying to be, you know, during quarantine time, I was trying to be, I, I guess I shouldn't say chocolate's healthy because we used unsweetened cocoa. Unsweetened cocoa is actually, you know, 
much better for you. Um, has it's high in antioxidants and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to have chocolate, to have unsweetened dark, unsweetened cocoa, is much better for you. So it's better to make a cocoa chocolate cake than a chocolate chocolate cake or something like that. It's still chocolate, still yummy, yummy. So. Um, I apologize for being late this morning, but considering that Leo was traipsing through my kitchen with trunks and bags to bring them all into the living room because the upstairs is that way and the living room is that way. And so it's just, uh, that's it. This is my little one of my powdered shaker, powdered sugar, powdered sugar shaker. This is my sugar shaker um, that I will then sprinkle, you know, the powdered sugar on my cake at the end. So yummy, yummy. Um, I will figure out this recipe, but I will tell you quickly. It's four eggs, 200 grams of sugar, but I put in 175, 250 grams of mascarpone, 150 grams of flour, 50 grams of cocoa, teaspoon of baking powder, teaspoon of vanilla, and then sprinkle with powdered sugar. That's the recipe. I will write it out for you with the final picture like I do, and I will post it, and I will put the link in the top here. But um, then you can all have it and you can make it when you're not in a fruity mood and you're in a chocolatey mood. Now, you know what's really good with this? Raspberry. So if you make it you know, a nice little thick, dense cake, once it's cooled, if you cut it in half very carefully, or you can make two, you know, two layers, whichever way you want to do it, um, put some raspberry jam and then take a little extra of the mascarpone. You know, maybe that's what I'm going to have to do. Maybe I will take some mascarpone and I will mix some raspberry jam in it and then spread it in the middle. Ooh, that'll be so nice. You can do it that way or you can do a layer of mascarpone and then a layer of raspberry. It'd be really nice. Or strawberries. Ooh, fresh strawberries and musk. Oh, yeah. Maybe you take a little bit of... Yesterday, I had a whole big container of... Um, and a whole big container of strawberries. So I cut them up, it was part of our dessert. We had vanilla ice cream and I had these strawberries that I, I cut them up in little pieces. You put in just like two spoonfuls of honey in it and you stir it around, stir it around and it just draws the juices out of the strawberries. And then it's like this nice little yummy, you could just drink it stuff. And you put that on top of your vanilla ice cream and you're like, ooh, and my little chocolate sauce. Anyway, um, that would be really yummy. Do what you do is do that with the strawberries take the strawberry juice after it's marinated and whatever they call it in the honey, take that juice, mix that with the mascarpone, spread the mascarpone, then put the strawberries on top. That's the ticket. That'd be so good. Um, so anyway, I see this is how my crazy brain works. Every time I'm doing something, I'm like, Hmm, I could do this. I could do that. So it just evolves and then we'll try it, you know, so who knows what I'm going to end up doing with this when it's done. Maybe I will do that and I'll show you pictures of it. And then I'll just write a little note in my recipe saying, and if you want to do this, boom, there it is. Um, but it's, you know, this is where it gets fun in the kitchen. This is where you get creative. Like, oh, wow. You know, there's stuff that I've made a million times and the kids will sometimes when they have it, they're like, wow, this is really good, mom. I'm like, you've had it before. We have. And then there's stuff I make for the first time. And they're like, oh, I love when you make this. I'm like, I've never made this before. They've had so many combinations and mixes of things I've done that they don't remember what they've had. They just know it's good, you know? So um, that's, you know, that's that. Oh, you guys, I am really bummed. I'm not in Italy right now. I just have to tell you. Uh, I went to Trader Joe's the other day and you know when I go to the store and my Trader Joe's the one in Florham Park New Jersey there's my little kickback to them they are awesome and when I usually go there they have a little like test taste station in the back and they've got these little teeny weeny espresso size coffee cups and they have coffee samples and sometimes tea or sometimes it's coffee and decaf or whatever and um I go back there and I sit and chit chat with whoever's working behind the counter and it could be you know um oh gosh any number of them there's a bunch of different Pam or or Rich or Tom or whoever that's behind the counter and I sit and I chat with them and it's kind of like my little piazza it's like me going to the bar getting a little coffee and chatting with Rosetta behind the bar 
And so this is my closest thing I can find around here. The coffee shops around here, what do we got? We got Starbucks, we got Dunkin' Donuts. And for being in New Jersey, for all these Italian things we've got, you can get an espresso at a restaurant, you know, but that's about it. Now, I will say that um, my buddy Tino, not my son, my friend, um, who owns a pizzeria over here, and he's, you know, he's a paisan like me, and he loves Italy like me, um, I can go in there and get an espresso, but, and usually he'll sit and chat with me while we drink it, so that's cool. I only found him about, about him in the past, uh, I don't know, six months or something. Anyway, or maybe not even. <clears throat> He's kind of new. But, um, great pizza. But, um, you know, they're, nobody's open right now. They're, nobody's open right now. So they're starting to open up here and all that kind of stuff. But we'll see. You know, I'm still make the best cappuccino at home. Like I had my little cup that I took my last two sips of. You know, I have... Uh, all these just I have so many different cups and coffee and but I do love my cafe borbone which is my my Italian espresso Leo came home I sent him I found the coolest thing if you ever have to send a gift to somebody overseas wait a minute I'm gonna show it to you because I have it right here so while Leo was in Japan um, I couldn't like he couldn't have a burner you know he was in barracks which like a dorm room um so he couldn't have anything so obviously he could not have any espresso coffee so i bought him this cool espresso pot but check it out Ta -da -da -da. it's electric so he could have good espresso i found this if i'm not mistaken i found it on amazon it's i i musa i musa i don't know i am usa um and i ran water through it before um before I sent it to him just to make sure it perked and everything. Actually, I think I did do one pot of coffee in it. But it's just like your regular espresso pot. Um, you know, you got your, put your water in here. He's got paper towels in there, smart boy. Um, your, you know, your filter. It does have a filter lid. I never really use the filter lid because it does have the filter in the regular gasket just like your regular espresso pot. The only difference is, is that this top is plastic I think I saw, I'm not sure if I saw some solid ones or not, so it's kind of, that's the only, eh, but you know what? For somebody for a dorm room, this is completely no open heating elements. And I think it was like, if I'm not mistaken, it was not atrociously expensive. I don't know, maybe $25, $30, really not horrible. So anyway, and then he came home. I sent him so much coffee. He came home with one can left of, of Lavazza, which is also a very, very good espresso cafe so that's a really cool idea to take you know to have to you know when you travel when you you know it's good to use in a hotel room um it's good to use like i said in a dorm room in a barracks room so if you have any um young uh people in your family in the service you want to send them a cool gift send them a bunch of tins of espresso coffee and one of these electric pots really nice um, he used the heck out of it. He was like, Mom, this is awesome. Everybody's coming to my room for coffee because the other coffee here sucks, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so anyway, so, oh, yeah, you know what? I, that's, that's what the filter lid, yes. But you know what? I've never, ever made a half pot. Actually, um, I have different size pots. So if I need to make a three or a six or a 12, I have... I probably have a half a dozen mochas, a dozen pots. This one I think officially was a, was that a nine or a 12, a nine? I think it's a nine cup espresso. Um, but it's a really, you know, these are the kind of thoughtful gifts that when you're, th you know, we all tend to over shop, over gift, over buy for ourselves. If you're gonna spend the money, um, spend it on something actually useful get things that you are going to use on the daily that actually 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 not claim but actually make your life better like having good coffee makes your life better having a good pot to brew it in makes your life better having a good frying pan which i just happen to have over here because i just washed it and i moved it off the counter because it was there and i didn't put it away 
Um, but this is my Datera Cucina pan with a nice silicone handle and my nice lid that's still a little drippy wet. I just washed it. Um, you can get those from my page. So um, I will actually going to put up another link for those again because the people that have bought them already um, have written back to me and told me how much they love them. So and if you're one of the ones that bought one and didn't tell me yet, then you have to uh, let me know what you think because I just love this pan. And you know, it like I said, it's lightweight. Even with the glass lid on it, you know, it's easy to hold. But you know, um, my my cast iron, it's like ugh, you know, and my cast iron that's way heavier than this is smaller. This is um, 11 inches, and my cast iron I think is is it a 10, 8 or 10 in, 10 inch? I think maybe it's a 10 inch. So um, these are fantastic pans. So I will put to, I'll put the link up again today, but. Um, Anyway, uh, that's that. You know what? Since we've been sitting here and I have been just babbling on, um, I would, I'm going to go check on the cake really quick. And if by some crazy chance it's ready, I will show it to you. Um, okay, Pampered Chef. Anybody who ordered Pampered Chef stuff, um, there are, it's, it's coming. Even Pampered Chef has many, many apologies out there. Just the same with everything else that shipping is just moving a little bit slowly. Stuff usually takes two weeks. You know, uh, sometimes you're lucky you get it in like you know, 10 days. Um, but um, right now it's taken like three, three and a half, you know, weeks or so, even uh, on occasion, even up to four, but the most people have been getting it three to three and a half. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's where that's at, but it's on the way. Um, I've been, I check on them kind of daily to see if they've shipped or where, what status they're at. So <clears throat> yeah, that darn COVID. Hold on, let me check the cake. Well. It's not ready yet, but it is almost ready. The top is so perfect. There's those, you know, those telltale crack around it that makes it just look like the chocolate wants to jump out. Really yummy. So, and of course, when I was over there, I had to take the other lick of the spoon. <laughs> so if you see me licking my lips, it's a little chocolate. <laughs> and so anyway, I have a craft idea to share with you guys today. I know lots of people redo their kitchens on occasion. And what do you do when you're trying to decide what countertop you want? You go to the hardware store and you get all these tile samples and they're always ones you like because if you didn't like them, you wouldn't be looking at them to see if it's one you like. So you get all these samples and they're beautiful. They're actually beautiful and they're perfect shaped tiles. Look at this. But how cool is that? Because like, see this one has little, this one and this one almost match, but this one's got green specks and this one's got blue specks in the midst of the browns. This one's like a dark brownish, bluish grayish. And of course the white speck, white matches with everything. So what you do is you go buy those little felt, pe or you can just get a square, you know, felt, regular felt, and you glue stick or, or glue gun or some glue, rubber cement, whatever glue the bottom, put some felt on the bottom, whether it's the little sticky dots, you can take these stupid labels off if you want, or if you're putting felt on the whole thing, you can just leave it there. And you've got some awesome coasters that are really cool looking. They're classy, you know, they look, and then you like lay them on the, you put them on your table, crisscross like this, and it just looks so pretty. And they're, they're smooth on the edges, so there's no sharp edges, they don't look unfinished. Sometimes, some places do have the edges that look unfinished. Um, some of those more composite, well, this is actually probably some kind of composite. To, no, I don't know what the, you know, I bet you it tells me on the back. This one is called tea leaf leather, but that's what it's called. Oh, this is sile stone. So these are those composite-y things, but still, um, really cool idea because you can either take these and then what, throw them away? Or you can do this. You can also use these for a hot plate for under a pot or pan, trivets. And um, you can use them to put on a under a plant, you know, just to lift it up a little. You know, you can use them for lots of things. Um, so I personally like, ooh, great idea with the granite squares or serve butter on them for, a, that's cute. Oh, you know, be cool. You put them in the refrigerator and then you could put little slice, you could pre-slice the butter and lay it on here. How classy cute would that look, huh? See? We come up with cool ideas for these things. I will tell you that when I was a kid, 
Um, there was also, for some reason, I guess my parents were doing something, and we had a couple boxes of, it was more like linoleum. It wasn't um, stone like this, but they were these little linoleum squares. And what I did with those is I glued, back then we had wooden spools for the thread, remember those? I glued wooden spools to the bottom and they made coffee tables for my dollhouse. But even that could be something cute. You know, put little legs on this, like a couple little wooden spools, or, you know, you can go to the store and buy little pieces of wood, little pieces of dowels or something, and make like a little mini table to lift up, and you could put it like in the middle of your table, have one, you know, make, oh, candles. You know, you can stick candles on these babies, but you put little legs on them, and this is, you know, really safe because it's fireproof. So see, these are, um. Oh, see, use them for hot plates too. So this is really, these are really cool. So I just wanted to, ooh, also do alcohol ink designs. Ooh, cool. What are alcohol ink designs? I don't know what that is, but you're going to have to show me. Um, so anyway, so that's my little craft slash not waste, use it up, make something pretty cool, unique. Nobody else will have what you have because don't we all strive to be unique in this world, right? brainstorming. I love to brainstorm. I think that if I had to say one of my favorite activities, you know, like I love to read, I love to draw, I love to cook, but I love brainstorming more than anything. I love coming up with the ideas for everybody to use, whether I'm using it or I give you an idea to use. So if you guys ever have something that you don't know what to do with it before you toss it, show me, send me a picture of it and I will tell you what to do with it. And I will tell you if you should toss it. So there. So um, anyway, I think on that note, my cake is just about done, but it's not quite done. So I could hang out and just talk some more and wait for it to be done to show you because it actually is cooking rather quickly. So I'm gonna say this is uh, probably no more than a 30 minute cake. It's only been in, I think, about 20, 25 minutes, so, and it's just about done. So I'm gonna say it's a 25 to max 30 minute cake at, you know, 350-ish. So there you go, that's a nice quickie. Of course, you know, you could put this in a sheet pan and make little squares, you know, you could do something like that. Um, it was funny, I was watching some other recipe and this person made basically a thin sheet cake. They took the cake though and they cut out circles with a circle cookie cutter. Then they spread, you know, a filling on both sides and they put it together and made like a little cake sandwich. Okay, cute idea. But then you got all this wasted cake from cutting circles out. Why not just do, cut it in half, this was what I was saying, I wanted to cut it in half. Just cut it in half, spread it on the whole thing, put the whole top on and make them squares. Then you have little square sandwiches instead of round ones. I know the round is cute, but why waste a bite, right? So this is what I, this is how I think when I watch recipes. I'm like, that's cute, but this gives you another bite. So I'd rather go with square and have an extra four little corners than go with circle, you know? You can draw a circle with icing on top or something like that, and if you want, if you're really in circle mood, you know? But man, why waste? It's extra work and you're losing bites. So that's that. All right, I'm gonna go take one last peek just so I can see if possibly I can show you. If not, I'm signing off. I got stuff to do, you know, and so do you. Um, while I'm going to check on the cake, please, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please go on there and subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button. And if you would do me a favor, please share my page or share one of my YouTube videos and actually write something at the top, like say, please, would you subscribe to Darina's channel as a favor to me? And then people will actually do it. Some, uh, I will tell you a secret, and also for anybody who has a business, this is a tip. If you share something and you just share it, okay, here's the link, share. That really doesn't do much and most people don't click on it. If you share, but you add a line and you personalize it and you're basically, you're giving it credence by you, um, recommending it, then people actually share. So whenever you have a business and you want people to share your stuff, ask them to say a little line, like this is my friend Darina, or this is this girl I can't stand her, but her cooking is good, you know. Be right back.
O M G. Look at this. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna show you. It looks like lots of them. See how pretty it is? It's got that beautiful crack down the middle, which I just love because that's where all the smell comes from. Um, wow. Look at, okay, so I'm gonna show, see the nice moistness? You can see the fluff in it. I'm gonna do this up right here in front of you guys. I'm gonna push you back a little further so I have some space. Got my big giant spatula. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna, you can't see this part. I know I'm too close, but I'm just, oh, I don't even need to. This thing just comes, I'm just gonna show you how easily this is just away from the sides, not even something that I have to run the cake pan, the, the knife around. I mean, I am just in case, but it's all not even. All right, now usually I don't unpan something until it's a little bit halfway cooled off, or I'll take the, let's see here, before I, oh yeah, look at how easily this is coming, look at, whoop, came right off, not even a jiggle. Look at this, look at this, oh my goodness. And I'm gonna take a picture of it because I can, camera. Wow, this is a beautiful, it's a beautiful, okay. So now I'm gonna powder sugar it. I'm gonna show you. Look at how pretty that is, huh? Sliding off, there we go. And look at the nice moistness of it. I'm not gonna cut this right now, cause look at this. It's just so, I really wanna cut it right now. But I'm gonna let it cool off. We're gonna have it for dessert after lunch today. That'll be our nice little treat. And I'm gonna post the picture with the recipe. But you can see the sponginess of it. It just has some nice give. You know, kind of exciting, right? chocolate cake today. All right. So on that note, I'm going to say thank you. Please subscribe. Please follow. Hey, you know, I'm also on Instagram.